Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, I first want to thank our principal here, Philip Weinberg, and the entire team here at the High School of Telecommunication Arts and Technology for hosting us today, as well as their incredible commitment to their students. Uh, this high school's uh, wave your hand there, principal. There we go. Uh, this school's success in preparing its students for college by focusing on teacher excellence and a demanding curriculum is a big reason why Principal Weinberg was awarded the Sloan Public Service Award last year, and it's also among the reasons why we've selected this high school as one of the 20 schools that will participate in our software engineering pilot which will launch in grades 6 and 9 this September. We're expecting 1,000 students, or about 50 students per school, to participate in the program the first year. And over the next three years, we will uh, phase in additional grades. And by 2016, when the program is at full capacity, 3,500 students will be learning in some of the most exciting and cutting-edge computer science and software engineering courses anywhere. Now, I announced our commitment to expanding computer science education in our State of the City speech about 10 days ago. Our administration certainly knows that it's vital to prepare our children to succeed in an increasingly technology-centered economy, and we think that the software engineering pilot will help us do exactly that. It will not only ensure that more of our students receive comprehensive computer science and software engineering instruction, helping them prepare for the high pay tech jobs that loom so large in the future of our city. It's also central to our effort to expand New York's New York as a role uh, New York's role as a global tech hub because having access to great talent is really one of the most important factors in making that happen and this program will help create the homegrown workforce that the tech community needs. This is an effort that's critically important to the future of our city, and as an old tech entrepreneur, very old tech entrepreneur, <laughs> it's something I strongly believe in. Uh, I could certainly never have started and built my company without brilliant computer scientists, and the skills that students learn here will open new doors for them, but also it will create new options, uh, not only in terms of finding jobs, but in starting companies and creating jobs. And I did want to take a couple minutes to describe how the software engineering program will work and what it will Will mean for students because I know a lot of the um, reporters here would like to apply um, <laughs> and see if they can. Uh, the engineering uh, software engineering pilot will feature a rigorous curriculum that includes both core and elective topics. Some of the core topics will be taught in the first year, uh, and they include computer programming, embedded electronics, web design and programming, e-textiles, robotics, and mobile computing. Digital fabrication and 3D printing are just two of the first year elective uh, topics. Uh, by the time the program is fully implement, intel, implemented, students will be able to learn how to develop content for some of the most widely used mobile operating systems in the world, including iOS and Android. And they'll also be able to develop programming, lang to develop programming languages like Python and Java. And they'll be able to learn the ins and the outs of some of the world's leading technology systems, including SAP and Oracle. Now, many of these courses will help students earn certifications, which employers value in their hiring decisions, and will work with the participating schools to help them apply for state education department approval so that graduating students who complete the program will earn degrees that have the important career and technical education endorsement. As exciting as these courses, uh, course offerings are for this, pro for this program are, we know its success will depend on having well-qualified teachers in the classroom who can engage their students and make these challenging subjects come to life. So starting next month and continuing throughout the summer, 40 teachers, two from each of the schools, will begin receiving extensive professional development, and we want to make sure that they're ready to teach these new courses when the program starts. We'll also provide additional comprehensive professional development for more teachers as the program expands, and our ex administration is talking with private sector and philanthropic organizations to help finance this effort. The software engineering program will build on work we've also done to connect more students to college and to careers, and that includes our partnership with IBM and CUNY in creating a new high school that will offer two years of college, which we're calling grades 13 and 14. Qualified students there will graduate with an associate's 
advanced degree and a spot at the front line, front of the line for job opportunities at IBM. And as I mentioned in my State of the City speech, we'll also open a second academy for software engineering high school in September. These schools, as well as the curriculums we're announcing today, will dramatically, we think, increase the number of our students who take the advanced placement computer science exam, including many African American students. And it's also an important part of our comprehensive effort to prepare New York students for the new tech economy. And uh, now I would like to welcome the man who's leading this charge and better make it succeed, for our kids' sake, uh, Schools <laughs> Chancellor Dennis Walcott. Dennis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's a pleasure to be here this afternoon or this morning. And this represents, I guess, around the third time I've been here and just around that corner in this library. I had an opportunity to sit down with a number of the students who are just really such a high level of performance as a result of having a great principal, fantastic teachers, uh, totally involved parents, and a very rigorous academic environment here at this great high school. So, Phil, I want to say thank you for your leadership and everything that you do. And as the mayor indicated, that we are moving forward with the expansion of our software engineering uh, schools, and it's as a result of teamwork, quite frankly. It's not just about me. It's about all of us as a team. And just to stand here with Deputy Mayor Steele and private partners who are part of this team really benefits our students in the long run. And basically, the mayor said it all. But I just want to add one fact in that prior to this administration, Administration, the last career technical education school, or what was called vocational schools in my generation, I think your generation as well, was started in New York City in 1960. The last one was opened in 1960. Since this mayor has been in office, we have opened up 21 career technical education schools with a plan to open seven additional ones uh, this coming September. So that's 28 new schools. An amazing number. And as the mayor indicated, it's not just 9 through 12 schools, but 9 through 14 schools, grades 13 and 14. And also we're looking at 9 through 13 schools as well, where that fifth year in high school you'll get a special certification. So we're looking at a variety of ways to make sure that our students are college and career ready. And looking at a variety of different options, including software engineering. This past Friday I was out at the Harbor School. We were looking at marine biology. I was at a school this morning where to enter this school, you're going to have to speak Latin and speak Latin for four years. So they're teaching Latin at a very high level as well. Options for our students, choices for our parents, all to benefit our students to make sure they're college and career ready. And none of this would have been possible without the mayor's leadership. So, Mr. Mayor, I want to thank you for your leadership and being part of a great team on behalf of our 1.1 million students. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Kilroy, for the record, was my Latin teacher. And after <laughs> Latin, it was either in seventh or eighth grade, I could certainly not speak Latin. And uh, the shows and uh, the rest of my life as my I'll mother would take you to this class so that way <laughs> thank you can then practice your skill. Thank you. And my uh, Emma took Latin and, and liked it. Uh -huh. I cannot do that. Um, the, uh, this great new program, I think it's fair to say, could not have happened without the vision and determination of another of our city's leaders, Deputy Mayor for Economic Development, Bob Steele. Bob, you want to describe it a little bit? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, and congratulations to the Chancellor and to all of his fantastic team at DOE. They've been fantastic partners working to create this whole initiative and really make it come to life. You see the leadership day in and day out by the Chancellor, and it's really inspiring to all of us who work in the administration. Uh, the education announcement that we're here to talk about this morning is not just about education, as the mayor suggested. It's just the latest component of a comprehensive strategy that Mayor Bloomberg has led to position New York City to be sure that we outperform in the knowledge economy of the future. That's right. The economy is moving to become a knowledge economy. We've got to make sure that our students are prepared to succeed in the knowledge economy. The highest profile components of this strategy, of course, are the three applied science campuses that we've talked about in the past. Cornell, which, by the way, is already holding classes at the Google offices in Chelsea. Number two, the NYU CUSP program in Brooklyn, Brooklyn and Columbia in Morningside Heights, all of which will be developed in the coming years to double, that's right, double the number of engineering grad students and faculty in our city. Uh, the Applied Science Initiative was and continues to be about creating and attracting and retaining leading academic talent at the graduate level. But the people that will start, in many cases, the next Facebook, the next Apple, or whatever, and we've got to make sure those people are here to provide the leadership. 
But that's not all. Mayor Bloomberg and our administrations also committed to ensuring that New York school children are prepared for the jobs of the future and the next generation of, to benefit from New York City's next generation of startup success stories. That's why we're excited about this next generation uh, of initiatives uh, that basically uh, will set us up in the right place. We're excited about the 10,000 New York City public school students and the 200 teachers that Cornell will be working with from its campus on Roosevelt Island. We're also excited about the Academy for Software Engineering in Gramercy. And we're excited today about the 20 programs for middle and high school students we're discussing. They'll teach cutting-edge computer science to thousands of students, as the Chancellor described, and more importantly, or just as importantly, train teachers in this emerging field. They need help, too, to be able to provide the leadership for the students as they reposition themselves in great ways. Lastly, we'll also be excited about the second Academy for Software Engineering, which will open this next fall. The first has been a rousing success, and what we're going to do is repeat the same successful play and do it again. Together, these initiatives will help train young New Yorkers to be ready for the jobs that are most in demand today and go on to higher education and computer science and potentially become one of the students at Cornell Technion, Columbia, or NYU. We've been working closely with companies in the tech industry and in, every, in every other industries that have consistently told us that these are the kind of skills they need at every level of their organization. That's why we believe there will be significant private and corporate philanthropic interest in supporting and continuing to expand this initiative. Let me also thank a member of my team that's been the laboring oar on this, Eugene Lee, who's worked closely with the Chancellor and his team at DOE and the tech industry to shape this initiative. Mr. Mayor, it's a great day for New York City's students and Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Um, Mike Nolet is the uh, co-founder and chief technology officer of App, App Nexus, which is one of our city's homegrown tech companies. It provides custom digital advertising for its clients. Mike, would you say a few words about what's needed here? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So you can tell I'm the engineer here because I'm the only one not wearing a tie. <laughs> So, um, and I would say I'm very, very excited about this program. I was, uh, on a personal note, I was lucky enough. Does that mean, for example, Mr. Seifman, who doesn't have a tie, is an engineer? <laughs> he qualifies for this program, clearly. <laughs> He's got the first step. I'm not so sure after that. First step. You've got to loosen it. Um, so just on a personal note, though, I, I was lucky enough to go to a high school that had a computer science program. I took my first computer science class in my freshman year. Two years later, I wrote and sold my first software application, and that's when I started my career as an entrepreneur, and that ultimately led me, led me to co-founding AppNexus, and it would not have been possible without kind of that inspiration that I got from my teachers, you know, 17 years ago. So um, on a more professional level, uh, I can't say how important this is. Five and a half years ago, when we were raising money to start AppNexus, all the Silicon Valley investors said, you should move to California. There's not enough tech talent in New York, is what we continue to hear. Um, last month, we announced that we just raised $75 million. I think it's a good testament to the fact that we've proven that there is tech talent here. But I can say for the last five and a half years, our number one challenge has always been hiring great engineers. Um, it's the hardest to find talent. And as the entire economy is going digital, every company in the world is looking to hire software engineers. And so programs like these that prepare our students are critical to success, not just of New York City, but actually of those individual students, as tech skills are just going to become a requirement of almost any job you can imagine. So even if they be don't become engineers themselves, these skills will help them grow later on. So uh, one thing that's clear is what we've seen is demand far outstrips supply. Um, we are trying to hire 100 engineers this year, so taking that money primarily here in New York to try to grow the New York economy. Um, and so, sadly, these students might be uh, not eligible for this year, um, but we're looking forward to hiring as many as possible when they graduate from college. Thank you very much. Uh, Mike, thank you. Uh, Principal Philip Weinberg received, as I said before, the Sloan Public Service Award last year. Uh, educators are responsible for shepherding the institution that's the most important to the survival of the nation, uh, he said. And I couldn't agree more. Philip, you want to say a few words about today's announcement? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's our honor to welcome Mayor Bloomberg, Chancellor Walcott, and our friends and guests to the High School of Telecommunication Arts and Technology today. September will mark the 100th year in which the young people of Brooklyn have been educated in this beautiful building. We are excited to have the opportunity to work to continue the work that was begun 100 years ago by participating in this new software engineering program, a program which will bring some of the world's newest technologies and ideas to our school.
We do believe that the software engineering program will be just one more way for us to help our students grow and learn and become essential members of our community. By teaching students to think about the processes inherent in building something, by teaching students to test hypotheses and to envision new structures, we know we can spur our students to become even better thinkers and learners. This program will oblige us to foster in our students the ability to generate new ideas, which has always been the most powerful tool available to any young person. Therefore, it corresponds beautifully with New York State's commitment to the common core state standards and with the Chancellor's own citywide instructional expectations, both of which require our students to construct their own ideas rather than to reiterate information. For we know that it is the ability to, to be in charge of information rather than to restate it which will empower our young people to make real choices about the lives they will lead in the 21st century. The entire High School of Telecommunication Arts and Technology community joins me in thanking the Chancellor and the Mayor for including us in the software engineering program. We look forward to seeing the ways in which it will help uh, our young people build a better world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Philip, thank you. Uh, I should point out we are honored to have with us today Valerie Barr. Valerie, thank you for coming. She is the chair of the uh, Committee on the Status of Women in the Association for Computing Machinery and Cameron Wilson. He is the director of the Association for Computing Machinery. And we'll be happy to take some questions, but first let me just try to summarize for our Spanish-speaking uh, audience. Uh, hemos escogido a 20 escuelas para un programa piloto de ingeniería el, uh, en uh, programación para estudiantes. Vamos a empezar con mil estudiantes en septiembre donde uh, aprenderán nuevas tecnologías y cursos in, uh, innovadores en computo. Uh, estamos creando uh, nuevas oportunidades para nuestros niños para que estén mejor preparados para la universidad. And with that, we'll be